Good evening everyone, it's 10 to 8 and I've had about 10 minutes to think about tonight, so definitely feeling unprepared. But you know, even thinking about that, if I had all the time in the world, I would never do justice in a talk when it comes to speaking about what Good Friday means to me as a Christian and us Christians in the world. You know, I actually did um, a theology course for a few months, a few years back, and I, um, we had a weekend just looking, I suppose, at the meaning of the cross and all that Jesus did on the cross. And it was the one assignment I couldn't do, couldn't complete. Didn't know where to start. I couldn't clarify anything. You know, there was just so many angles you could take that shows God's mercy and love and compassion and grace. Grace, this word I might use tonight, means undeserved love, that God shows humanity in what Jesus did on the cross. And so with that in mind, it's gonna be a very basic talk about what's come to my mind in the last few minutes. You know, the Bible teaches us that because of our disobedience, we rebelled against God in the Garden of Eden and that disrupted this loving relationship between man and God. And you know, if God is just, um, he has to, I suppose, um, deal with our sin, okay? Um, and this is what he did through the cross. Okay, um, I'd like to read a verse from Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 that says, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. How does this um, impact my everyday life, what Jesus did on the cross? And I suppose I spoke yesterday briefly about the evil one in this world, that's that, that accuser. You know, and often I can feel like the biggest, like I'm not good enough, you know, and God, I've kind of messed up again, you know, let you down. I'm not being the person I want to be. And, you know, I'm always reminded of this verse, another verse from Isaiah, chapter one, verse 18. And it says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. You see, if Jesus hadn't died on the cross, I couldn't have a loving relationship with God. God the Father can't look at sin. It actually says in Habakkuk, let me just read out that verse, I'm reading a few here guys. It says, scripture says that God's eyes are so pure that he cannot look on sin in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13. But because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, I know that when God looks at me, he sees me as white as snow, pure. Even though I'm not, but I'm covered by, we, we say we're covered by the blood of Christ, you know. He, um, he washes us and cleanses us from our sins. I'd like to read an extract from this book, um, Dug Down Deep, that gave me a really good perspective years back on what Jesus achieved on the cross. This writer said that um, he was quite a senior person in the church and he did something awful. See, God sees what's um, in our hearts and what happens behind closed doors and no one knew, knew what he was up to. And you know, this is what he was feeling. He was saying, I was nothing but a disgusting hypocrite. As I lay there staring at the ceiling, I couldn't even bring myself to pray. I finally stepped into a fitful sleep. That's when I had a dream. I don't remember most of my dreams, but I doubt I'll ever forget this one. It was the most vivid and powerful dream I've ever had, before or since. I dreamed I was in a room filled with index card size files. They were like the ones libraries used in the past. When I opened a file, I discovered that the cards described thoughts and actions in my life. The room was a crude catalogue system of everything good and bad I'd ever done. As I browsed, cards under the headings friends I've betrayed, lies I've told, lustful thoughts, I was overwhelmed with guilt. Long forgotten moments of wrongdoing were described in chilling detail. Each card was in my handwriting and signed with my signature. Sadly, my misdeeds woefully outnumbered my good deeds. I tried to destroy a card, just desperate to erase the memory of what I'd done, but the past couldn't be changed. I could only weep in the face of my failure and shame. Then Jesus came into the room. He took the cards and one by one began signing his name on them. His name covered mine and was written with his blood. When I woke from the dream, I was overcome with emotion. I had never been so aware of my guilt before God and at the same time, the reality of my forgiveness by God. The dream helped me see my failure and sin. God's grace and love towards me and Jesus were also much more powerful than I'd ever realized. As I was thinking today on Good Friday, you know, I was just thinking um, of Jesus' lifeless body after he died on the cross. And I was thinking of his friends and how they must have been feeling, those closest to him. And I suppose just, um, if you're out there, you might be feeling like them, like all your dreams and your hopes are shattered. 
Jesus didn't live up to their expectations. You know, you might feel like your life has no purpose, no hope. You have nothing to look forward to in the future. And this is probably how Jesus' closest were feeling. And, you know, I suppose I just want to encourage you that uh, Jesus' um, disciples, they didn't know that Easter Sunday was just around the corner. And I promise you, I hope that you've seen through these 40 days so far, you know, how much God showers his love on me and fills my life with purpose. And I suppose if you've been thinking, yeah, Bernie, you know, actually, I think I'd like to give this Jesus guy a chance. I'm going to say a little prayer shortly. And I'd just like you um, to, and invite you, I suppose, to say it along with me if you feel that that's for you. And there's another verse in Revelation that says that Jesus says, Here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. God desires in his word, it also says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. God listens to our prayers and he can hear us now because of what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah, so Lord Jesus, it's um, just me and you. You know, I just want to thank you for all you've been doing in my life and speaking to me so far that you've brought me to this place. And Jesus, I just want to recognise that, um, you know, I've sinned and I've rebelled against you. You've seen my heart, Lord, and you know that it's not pure. And I'm sorry, God. And you know, Jesus, I really just now, I ask that you would come into my life. I thank you that what you did for me on the cross that you can wash my sins and you can free me from all these sins and make me pure. I pray, Holy God, that you would, Father, that you would send your Holy Spirit to live in me and to help me live the life that you desire for me to live, God. Jesus, I pray that through your Spirit you would increase my love for you every single day. Thank you, God. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, thanks guys, enjoy your reading and I'll chat to you tomorrow.